Hello everybody, welcome to the very first video on my YouTube channel. My name is Sam, um, and my first video that I wanted to have on YouTube was the setup of my budget planner using this Erin Condren monthly planner. Um, so, so first I just wanted to walk you guys through a pretty much empty planner and then I'm going to go through and just begin setting it up for my budget planner. So on this side, I don't know if you guys can tell, but this kind of reminds me of like a whiteboard where you can use like a dry erase marker and it would come off. So that's an option. Or if you wanted something more permanent, then you can use a Sharpie on this and then take off whatever you write with disinfecting wipes or just alcohol wipes. But you guys will see what I do with this side. On this side, I personally put my goals for this 12-month planner. It runs from August 2020 to July 2021. Here they have the space for the name. Here are um, the stickers that I use in my packaging for my Etsy shop. Um, I just thought that they would look nice, and I wanted to put it somewhere where I could see it. I think this is covering something up, but um, yeah, here's my sticker. And then it has this very beautiful quote on the next page, have enough courage to start and have enough heart to finish. So I just love that. And then the next side is a monthly view going from July 2020 to December 2021. I've seen a lot of people kind of just like annotate different important dates. So the two that I have right here are when my tuition is due for next semester and the next spring semester. And then here we have another monthly spread. So this could be a tracker um, on a monthly scale since it does have 12 boxes. Um, and you guys are gonna see what I do with this section later. Now I'm gonna flip to an empty month just so that you guys can see what it looks like before um, I design any of it. So right now I just flipped over to October. And then um, this first blank page that is lined is the first page that coordinates with this month. And I know that just because of the orange and then you get a monthly spread and I believe that the only dates that they note on the paper are dates in, that are U.S. holidays so here they have Indigenous Peoples Day and then they also wrote Columbus Day and then it goes on into this very nice page which I adore so it has three different boxes so here you can put um, bulleted list here we have some lines and then unlined and then a grid for easy, you know, graphing, tallying, um, and then a blank page. And then we have, I believe it's three sets. So another set of blank pages, another set, the last set, and then, oh, there's actually four. So there's four sets. And then the next one would be November and it has the blue. So I know that the blue starts right there. Um, and then now I'm actually going to skip to the very end. So again, I said that this runs through July 2021. And there was also the option of having it run 18 months through. Um, but I thought 12 was great. And you can always add the option of adding more sheets. You can add the option of using bulleted paper um, instead of this lined paper. So I thought that there were so many different things that you could do with this journal and really just make it your own. So at the very end, um, they show a yearly overview of 2022, which seems so far away, but I know it's going to be right around the corner, literally. Um, and then also they include a couple of packs of stickers that the brand Erin Condren sells themselves. Um, so I thought these were super nice. So those are probably annotating super important things. And then it has this folder. Uh, I'll probably just put stickers that I commonly use here or just papers that I need to document. And then the last paper, again, it kind of reminds me of like a dry erase board where you can easily write on it. This one is not lined like the first one was. And that concludes the blank journal. So now we're going to start again. I'm going to show you guys how I am planning on setting up my budget planner. So by budget planner, I mean that all of budgeting related things in my life will go in here. So I won't be putting things that don't necessarily relate to my finances. Um, for that, I would use another journal. 
So with this first page, like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to put my goals right here. So this is what I use my cardstock for, and I use this nice yellow color just to kind of match what the flowers going on here. Um, and I wanted to print this just because I knew that I was going to look at it so frequently. I didn't want to use Sharpie because I was scared that I wouldn't like how my handwriting came out. Um, so I found that the best way to do this was to print it. And I'm actually going to use washi tape to set this down. And while I'm doing that, I'll just walk through my different goals. So my first goal is to stick to a budget. So previously, I have always planned budgets on just a regular Google Sheets. Um, but I found that oftentimes I would not follow it to the T. Um, I would, you know, dip into other categories um, and, or end up using my credit card. That would happen quite often. So just by purchasing this planner and using up all my stickers and, ooh, there's a little hair. And really documenting and thinking out loud with my budget, just holding myself accountable, I thought it would be a great way, a great goal to have for this planner. So I'm going to go ahead and lay this down. Oh, this washi tape is so beautiful. Okay, so now the next one is to try the cash envelope system. So if you guys don't know what the cash envelope system is, um, essentially you set a budget for yourself in certain categories, um, just ones that you can kind of plan ahead for and you kind of know the ballpark of how much you would want to spend on something. So for example, if for groceries, I allow myself to have $100 dollars every month, then I would take out $100 cash and have either a physical envelope or just taking note of all the cash that I have coming in and out of my grocery purchases. And then that way I make sure that I am not going over my $100 budget. Um, and again, the reason that I think that I want to at least try this out is because um, again, I need to hold myself accountable for the money that I do budget. So just by taking out and tangibly holding only $100, um, I think that would help me. So I'm going to test that out. Next one would be documenting budgeting. So this goes along with like my YouTube and my Instagram, my Etsy shop. So that way I am holding myself accountable again. And I'm also sharing ideas and getting ideas from different creators and from people who like to watch videos like this, like me. Um, another step another goal that I have is to grow my emergency savings. And you guys are going to see that I make this a huge part of my planner. And the last one is no more student loans. So keyword on more. Um, so currently I'm in my last year of my master's program. And so far I have budgeted out ahead enough that I don't think I need to take out any more loans for this year, even though I have in uh, my undergrad and last year in my master's program. So my emphasis really for this budget planner would be to make sure that I am not taking out anymore, especially with the interest that goes on to graduate loans. Um, I definitely don't want any more of those. So now we are moving on to this name page and I'm gonna put my name in a very pretty font that I made with my Cricut and on Adobe Illustrator. Possibly the scariest part is making sure that it's aligned. <laughs> For the most part, I just wing it. So I went ahead and put my full name. I usually go by Sam, but I feel like it just looks nicer filling up the whole area right here. And then of course, Sam stickers. I'm not gonna put anything on this page. Over here, um, again, I already talked about how I annotated some important dates. I feel like I could also do some more. So for example, um, I have a eye doctor's appointment in November, so I could go ahead and mark that if I wanted to, or since I'm going to the eye doctor again in February, the dentist in September, these are dates that I could mark on here. But for now, I just chose my two big dates, which are my tuition due for the fall semester, and then my tuition due for the spring semester in January. So here is a monthly overview. So I knew that I wanted something that I could track monthly and really hold myself accountable. So for this, I thought that this would be a great place to track all of my emergency savings. So um, what I'm gonna do is my plan is to have a sticker or a space for all of the months. 
and then write the starting balance as well as the ending balance. Um, and I'm also gonna have a sticker for my goal so that it stands out super right to me. And then this way I could easily flip to this section and see where I started off at the beginning of my planner and where I started off towards the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quickly. Okay, so I went ahead and added all of my stickers. So at the top, I put a nice washi tape, um, and it's like this floral green, um, the pattern I got off of Cricut Access. And I put monthly savings right on top. I put each of the months, and I actually started in September and ended in July. And the reason being is that it's already pretty much the end of, it's the middle of August, um, and then I get paid monthly on the 15th. So I feel like my budgeting goes really from August to September. Um, so for that reason, I started with the September and I also put my goal in a box just all by itself so that I never forget what my goal is. And it is currently 2,500 by the end of July, 2021. And then this is how I would fill out all of the boxes. So just putting the starting amount and then the ending amount for that month. And now we're moving on into a monthly overview. Um, so here it says sticking funds, but I already think that I'm going to place this elsewhere. But right now I wanted you guys to look over here at the monthly overview. So of course this is what the original month looks like and it's perfectly fine, honestly. Um, but I just wanted to mainly test out um, what it would look like if I added different types of washi tape patterns. Um, so you guys are gonna see that I'm gonna put washi tape over here on this side put the month, put the days of the week, just using some scripts that I have on my shop. Um, this is a key where I'm going to indicate what each of the colors in my calendar mean. And then I'm also gonna put some washi tape down here just so that um, these two can combine. Okay, so I went ahead and added my tape to the top. Oh, and I actually forgot to put the month. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and put a sticker that says August right here. I went ahead and labeled all of the days of the month. Over here I have a key. So um, with these stickers, I have multiple of these stickers, and essentially the color indicates what I am tracking for that day. So if I see a purple color, I know that I grabbed something from my cash envelopes. I know if I see the screen, I know that I grabbed something from my sinking. Yellow means that I have to manually make that transaction. So I have a couple bills that I have to manually make just because I'm not paying the full. Other maybe things that aren't these categories essentially, and then unbudgeted would be something that I did not plan for that month. So I have to figure out where those funds are gonna come from. So the next thing that I'm going to do is actually put a sticker where my payday is, and that would be the 15th since I always get paid on the 15th. And these stickers I do offer in my shop. They're probably my best seller. So I'm going to go ahead and write, not write, stick on payday right there. And again, since my payday starts on the 15th, I'm really going to start tracking from August 15th until September 15th, and that will be my monthly budget. And now we're going to go on to this page, which has a lot of space for notes, essentially. So debt tracker, here's where I'm going to list all of my um, student loans, which are essentially all of my debt, and just a little bit of credit card debt that I hope to have um, paid off either at the end of this month or the end of next month. Something else that I want to track is my goals. So I'm going to go ahead and 
huh, what do I want my goals? I think I actually want it right here. So this would be like financial goals that I see myself coming to meet in this month. So there's only four. That's why I thought it was appropriate. So for example, I want to have my Chase credit card paid off by the end of September. Um, that would be an example of something that I would have right there. And on this next side, I'm actually going to put notes. So this just really has anything that I need to consider, anything that I perhaps bought for my Etsy shop and I need to, um, you know, budget that in my business expenses. And then the last category that I am going to account for is um, this top area. Well, first, let me put a sticky right on there just to tie it all together. And right there, I'm going to write um, a section for just this month. And by this month, that means anything that is coming up in the month that I need to plan for. So if I have a trip coming up, if it's my friend's birthday, just things that would account for me spending some money and that I do not want to forget about this month. I might also make one of these a next month section where I can just begin to jot down notes for myself about what I should remember for the upcoming month. So now we're moving into my actual monthly budget spread. So this would be all over here on this section. And I'm not actually going to set this up just quite yet, um, just because this would be in my next video where you guys can see all of the information that I would put here. And this should fit into one page. And on the next page, I'm actually going to put my weekly check-in. So the weekly check-in is essentially just every week to make sure that you are spending enough money that is reflected in your budget. So just again, another way to check in on yourself and make some changes if necessary. Now on this next page, I'm going to have my transaction log. So this transaction log would be to go with my sinking funds, which you guys saw a little earlier. So sinking funds are just ways of putting aside money every month for bills that you might not have every month. So an example of this would be like Amazon Prime. So if you're paying a total of $120 in, let's say, May, and you know that every May you pay $120, um, a way to budget for this would be to save up $10 every month until you reach Amazon Prime's bill in May. And another example would be perhaps um, setting aside money for your car maintenance every month. So every month you aren't getting your car worked on, but um, you know every couple of months when you do, you don't want to have a $100 bill that you weren't expecting that month. And that way you're setting aside maybe $20, $25 every month. That way when you are reaching these expenses, you have that money set aside for. And then the transaction log would be just to keep up with your sinking funds. So if you did go get your car worked on, then you can subtract that from your sinking funds and figure out next month how much you will need to keep up with that fund. And that ends my monthly budgeting system. I do have a couple of blank pages. I have two sets of blank pages. Um, so I'm not sure what I want to do with those yet, but for now, they'll just be there. And a couple of other things that I'm going to include in my budget journal. Let's start with the first one, which is emergency savings. So my plan for this is to divvy it up into 12 equal sections and then color it as I am reaching my goal. Um, so I love how these stickers came out. It's kind of like the inverse of what a typical sticker would be, which would be um, that the color is on the inside and then it's surrounded by white. And I'm actually going to go ahead and divvy this up into 12 equal parts right now and then fill up what I have currently, which is $400 out of the $2,500 that I want to have at the end of July. And that's another reason that I put it in July, just so that when I get here, I know exactly where I need to be.
Okay, so I went ahead and finished my emergency savings tracker. Um, so how I came up with 2500 is that I wanted to make sure that, you know, in a year I had a couple months saved of just any living expenses, if anything were to happen where I was getting no income whatsoever, this would hold me over for a while. So just a little safety nest. And then I have 400 right now. I went ahead and tallied up and then I was a little under. So I just went ahead and made sure that my goal was right there. And I just used markers to fill this in. It's kind of messy, but I actually like it. Um, so as I'm going on, this will look more colorful and even more amazing. And I'm going to show you guys next my other tracker that I am keeping. And this one I'm just going to put in June. So I'm kind of working backwards um, of just in case I think of any other trackers. Um, at least I'll have the rest of these month to keep me going. So the next tracker that I'm actually going to keep is for my passwords. So I have loads and loads of passwords, as I'm sure everybody does. So I'm not sure yet if I'm going to keep this specific to my finance accounts or if I'm going to include my Etsy business and other accounts. So I'm not quite sure yet, but I think I might just put maybe all of my new accounts since I currently have um, a lot of my passwords saved in my personal planner. So we'll just see where it goes from there. But what I want to keep track here is the website name, my username, and my password. And then even though usually my journal will be staying at home 99.9% oh, .9 of the time, um, I do like to like censor my passwords. I don't know if that's weird, but if anybody were to look at it, they still really wouldn't know my password and only I would know. So that concludes my budget journal for 2020 to 2021. Um, so far, wow, the colors are matching. I didn't even mean for it to be matching. Um, so I hope that you guys will follow me along in my journey of filling up most of the pages in this budget planner. And if you guys liked my video, go ahead and subscribe for some more. And, you know, leave a like, leave a comment. I'd love to get to know you guys. And I hope to see you guys in my next video. Thanks for watching.